Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. Generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a 2012 Euro style worker placement game. We're going to be talking about Village. And in this game, you'll be placing your workers out on the board to take actions whilst all the time being mindful about them aging and dying and hopefully before they die giving you victory points that will allow you to win the game so in this video we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules we're telling you what we do like we don't like and then we'll come back and we will tell you whether or not village still worth playing today and in the future so remember if you are new here then please consider subscribing to this channel we'll leave a comment in that section down below we'll see you after this so, Village, how do you play this game? So, Village is basically a bog standard worker placement game with a novel mechanic about your workers actually aging and then eventually dying, right? So, at the beginning of the game, you're going to take a load of villagers and you'll notice that each of them has got a number on it from one through to four. And when you recruit new villagers or new villagers are born, you'll be using the number ones first and then gradually progressing throughout their lifespan and then eventually you'll be using the number four villagers to take actions. You'll also get a player board and you'll put your marker on the relevant spot of the player board and every time you take an action, you'll be using time and you'll be moving this marker around the board until it goes over the bridge and then one of your workers will have to perish. So the game revolves around the usual Euro fare of taking cubes and doing an action. So at the beginning of the game, when you're doing setup, you will seed the board with cubes. You'll put all the cubes into a bag and you'll pull out a number of cubes dependent on how many players are playing the game. So eventually the board will be seeded with different cubes. Each action space will have a different number of cubes. And on your turn, you'll choose an action space that you want to perform the action of, and you'll take one cube, and then you'll perform the action from the action space that you took the cube from. So these cubes all represent different types of things. You've got the orange cube, which represents skills, and it's required for crafts and travel. You've got the green cube, which is persuasiveness. It's used on the market and the council chamber. You've got the brown cube, which is faith, funny old thing and this is used in the church and travel you've got pink which is knowledge and it's used in crafts and travel and then you've got the pesky old black cubes which represent the plague or the black death so if it's an influence cube if it's a colored cube then you'll take it and you'll place it on your farmyard and if it's a plague cube then you'll immediately return it into the supply and you'll lose two times you have to move your marker around your player board two spots so whenever you see a little hourglass on the board that means that you're going to have to deal with time you're going to have to move the marker around your board and essentially this game is basically just taking actions right if you haven't got a family member in a relevant spot then you'll place it on one of the locations on the board and then you'll take the action associated with that spot so Let's run through some of the actions that you can take, right? So you've got the grain harvest, and if you've got one or more family members on the farmyard, then you can perform the harvest action. You'll get two bags of grain from the supply. If you own a horse and a plow, you'll get three bags of grain. If you own an ox and a plow, you'll get four bags of grain, and you will stick these on your player board. You'll notice as well on your player board that you can only have five bags of grain, so don't get bloody greedy. Right, so the next action you could do is the family action. And what you will do, you'll take a family member from your supply and you'll add it to your farm. And you've got to remember, you've always got to take the lowest number of family member that's available, right? No cheating. So this action as well, you can also take a family member off the board from a action that you don't want to take anymore, right? So now you've got the crafts action. It's probably the most, say, complicated not complicated but it's a little probably the most difficult to explain so you've got the wainwright you've got the stables you've got the office and you've got the smithy and the mill and there's two ways of taking these actions you can acquire the goods that are on offer by using time or you can pay by using influence cubes or bags of grain right and the action space that you want to take will tell you what the cost is 
of each relevant spot. So at a Wainwright, you'll be able to build a wagon. At the stables, you'll be able to acquire a horse or an ox. At the office, you'll be able to make a scroll. At the smithy, you'll be able to make a plow. And at the mill, nobody can be placed there. Instead, you'll pay two time and return two bags of grains to the supply in return for two coins. And this is the only place that you can get money, right? Because it was sort of in short supply back in the days of the Black Death, wasn't it? So you've got the market space, which is the blue bit at the top. What you'll do, you'll be able to to supply a customer with what they want and you'll get the relevant number of victory points available. If you go here, it's not only you that gets to take the action, you get to take the action first, but then everybody else will get the opportunity to take the market action. So just be careful that you're not gifting somebody a free lunch here, you know what I mean? So with travel, this is where your prodigal sons branch off and try and seek their fortune like Dick Whittington. Place one of your family members on the first space of the track and then you'll move them along to the next space of the track and you'll get the benefit and you'll place a marker on that spot. And there's different rewards on offer. You've got victory points. You'll be able to pick up different cubes there and more often than not be using time to move around the countryside or wherever the hell these people are going to. So at the council chamber action, you'll be able to take a family member from your farmyard and place them on the first stage. This costs one time up two green influence cubes, or one time and a scroll. Or you can move your family members already in the council chamber but one stage forward. And this will cost you a little bit more, but it'll give you a better benefit. Or if you already have at least one family member in the council chamber, then you may perform a privilege action without moving a family member. And there's different types of privileges. You can take the next start and play a marker. You can get two influence cubes of your choice. You can take one good tile of your choice from the supply or you can pay exactly one coin to the supply in exchange for free prestige points or victory points on the victory point track sorted so you've got the church action you'll be able to add one family member from your farm out to the black bag and this is to do with the mass that happens at the end of each round and then you've got the well and basically you'll be able to return three cubes of any color from your farmyard to carry out one of the previous actions right this is sort of like a get out clause if there's nothing else you can do so at the end of the round once everybody has done their stuff you'll all take part in a little bit of mass you'll put the bishop pieces in the bag along with anybody else who has dumped their pieces in the bag and you'll draw four of the pieces out of the bag and then if one of your pieces were drawn out then you'll be able to place them on the first space of the church and if you've already got family members in there then you'll be able to move up one space by paying the appropriate cost at the end of the mass the player with the most family members in the church will get two victory points we've already talked about this but you've got to be very mindful of the fact that every time your marker goes across the bridge one of your family members is going to die and you'll remove one of the lowest numbered family members from the board and you'll bury them in either the village chronicle matching the space where they were taken from or you'll just dump them in an unmarked grave mozart style so at the end of the game it's either if the village chronicles filled up or there's no more spaces in the pit where you've just thrown people and a player with the most victory points will be the winner of Village. So what do we like about Village? So the first thing that we like about Village, and this is the thing that drew us to the game to start with, is that the albeit morbidly sounding death mechanism is actually really quite novel. The fact that you're placing workers out onto the board, they're going to age, they're going to become redundant, and then they're going to die, means that there's a definite sense of progression in this game. You're constantly striving to wring out every last piece of benefit from that family member, a bit like your boss, I guess. So the second thing that we really like about Village is the way that the focus on different aspects of the game, different actions in different areas, shifts throughout the game due to the fact that the Village Chronicle is gradually being filled up because people are taking dead family members from different spaces. And usually when we play this, the yellow spaces get taken very quickly because they're the ones that you'll need to get the plows and stuff to do other actions. So they fill up quite quickly. And dependent on who dies when, that means that those actions are going to be less valuable towards the end of the game, right? If you're just continually pulling people off the red spaces, they're not going to be available and there's not really going to be an incentive to go to these spots at the end of the game. So the next thing that we really like about Village is that there is a really good selection of different areas to visit. And they all do different things and they are all thematically sound. Okay, you can put your Village members to work 
harvesting grain or you can get them to build stuff. You can allow them to go down a spiritual route by dumping them in the church. Or you could just let them out into the world to travel around, scooping up victory points and sending you back maybe a little bit of dosh or maybe a corn sandwich. So all in all, the game is quite enjoyable in a thematic sense as well. We really, really like that when Euro games sort of add that thematic anchor. So what don't we like about Village? So the first thing that we don't like about Village is that the theme, whilst it's not as dry as other Euros, the fact that the villagers are sort of anonymous, they've got no personality, there's no personality cards or there's no special abilities that relate to the different structures in the village, right? It means that the game feels a little bit empty where you can't really make a connection with any characters in the game because there aren't any, basically. So it would have been nice had the developer included maybe some cards like in um, Pillars of the Earth where you've got different professions that are going to make a different impact in the game. So the second thing, second thing that we don't like about Village is that the drawing pieces from the bag during the mass is a little bit clunky because I know you can pay to have your piece removed but that's quite expensive so this adds a sort of a second random element along with the seeding of the board and it just feels like at the end of the round you've got that random bag draw it's like a case of pay or suffer the consequences and okay you don't need to go there but a good bulk of victory points are available in the church right so it's a bit of a bummer that sometimes you just gotta cross your fingers and hope that your stuff comes out so the final thing that we don't like about village is it's another one of these euro games that starts off with a wide breadth of options and different things to do they all interconnect quite well but as the game progresses then these options become more and more limited to the point where trying to plan your last actions there's not really that much that is going to benefit you in a way that's going to help you to win the game or for example a lot of the spaces in the council chamber are already filled or a lot of the spaces in the church are already filled up or you might not feel the need to build a plough for instance because you're not really going to want to go to the market space because a lot of the lucrative tiles have already been exposed right so it's just a shame that the promise and the amount of options available at the beginning doesn't carry through towards the end so to summarize is Village, still worth living in, eight years after it was first released. So we are going to say, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? We quite enjoy this game. We don't play this all the time, you know, we drag it out when we want something a little bit different, but it's a decent, decent Euro game. It's got a novel mechanic where your family members can be killed off and you get to choose which family members you bump off. Love it. There's a good sense of progression through the game. It, it's a game sort of tricks your brain into thinking you're actually moving through time, so to speak. But it's just marred that little bit by the anonymous nature of your village members. There's no personalities in the game and as a result, this game feels like it doesn't have any personality. Having said that, it is a lot better than a lot of other dry Euro designs out there. So we're going to give Village four out of five. There's a couple of expansions. You've got the Village Port expansion and you've got the Village Inn expansion that you can add to mix this up. We haven't played with them, so we can't really talk about that. And it might fix a few of the problems where there's no real personality in this game. So there you go, that's Village. Remember, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. We'll see you next time.